Here you are, doom scrolling on YouTube, or maybe you got a notification. Now, I do appreciate that you guys watch my videos and you help support my work. And I think these subjects are important, but man, do they really just... Sometimes when I wake up and read the news, it feels like that scene from Indiana Jones where the guy's like, Kalima, and then he shoves his hand into his chest and rips his heart out. Because the news is just, there's so much bad, awful things going on. But here's the reality. There's many people who are going to tell you, don't doom scroll, don't look at negative news. And I will be the first to say, make sure you're taking care of your mental health. You know, you don't want to just be trapped in a bubble. You got to read as much news as possible. At the same time, when I talk about this news, it's not because I want you to be wrapped up in a world of chaos and despair. It's because if you don't know what's happening, you ignore the problems. They can spiral out of control. And then the doom and despair comes for you no matter what. This idea that you could have ignored the culture war. And then the Black Lives Matter riots in 2020 happened and they burnt down your business, right? For those that were paying attention and got out of the cities before that happened, they were the lucky ones. But chance favors the prepared. So is it really luck? Daily Mail reports husband of Texas teacher fired for defending pedos in class and calling them minor attracted people says she was taken completely out of context. Here's the narrative. Leaked video. Teacher says, don't call them that. They're minor attracted persons, not not pedos. You can't label people that way. Student leaks the video. Teacher gets fired. Teacher claims, I was preparing the students for the crucible, and I was entertaining unpopular opinions that I myself don't hold. So some uh, supervisor comes out and he's like, you see, this was out of context and it was unfair. Then later recants and says, upon further investigation, uh, I take that back and she's gone. Here's the reality. Teachers are doing this. I don't care about this one teacher. Fine. Maybe it's out of context. Let's throw it to our good friends over at Project Veritas. NYC middle school teacher encourages students to engage in political violence, throw bricks at people with opposing views. Here's one. Prestigious NYC private school director touts sneaking her political agenda into classrooms. In, in, in one quote, she says, let me pull this up. We need a Dexter like sort of vigilante taking people out in reference to white children. So you want to know what happened? They told you don't discuss politics, don't discuss religion, don't discuss money. And these people started taking over your schools because you didn't want to talk about it. Now, I get it. Many of you did not want to talk about it. But this is what you get when you do or say nothing. So by all means, doom scrolling, they say, Ah, you know, go find some positive news. I know so many people that were prominent culture warriors, anti-woke, and they were just like, I got to get away from this stuff living in a bubble. Mm, Yeah, okay. In the six years since some of these people retired, dropped out or went woke themselves because they were scared. These people have been teaching your children. But cowards, there was a big movement in the, in the 2010s, Gamergate and all that. And many of these people got, got scared, took down videos, went into hiding. Cowards. And they allowed this thing to happen. You knew how bad it was getting. And now you have teachers pushing this stuff consistently. The Daily Mail reports, The husband of a Texas teacher who was fired earlier this month after she defended pedos in class has said she was an exemplary teacher who was taken completely out of context. Maybe. Let's read. Amber Parker, 53, taught English at Franklin High School in El Paso until she was sacked after making the comments in class, uh, which were captured on video, subsequently shared to social media. During the 18 second long clip, which was posted to TikTok, The teacher can be heard telling students, stop calling them that. You're not allowed to label people that. Stop it, Diego. We are not going to call them that. We're going to call them maps, minor attracted persons. So don't judge people just because they want to with a five-year-old. Whoa. Yeah, that can't be a real quote, can it? It's in the video. Maybe she was taken out of context, perhaps. Sorry, teachers. Y'all ain't getting no benefit of the doubt from me. Not, Not a single one of you. Sorry, this teacher may be trying to make a point about differing opinions or whatever, but I'm just I'm here to tell you, no matter what the circumstances, homeschool your kids. Micro schools is a a big thing. I've been uh, mentioning this quite a bit. I uh, recently provided low five figure funding to a micro school. And I want to the reason I say that is because I want 
You know, there's, there's a lot of people who are like, why aren't you doing more? Why aren't you doing more? And I typically don't talk about the giving. But when I talk about issues like this, I want you to know I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I genuinely believe we have to do this. When you support TimCast.com, just know not only are you helping staff and employ the crew here, the work we do, but for me, my income, I'm even putting, I, I, I do well. And I can afford to put some towards things I truly believe in that I think this, this, this world needs. It is a Christian micro school. That means it's basically, you know, it's like 60 kids being tutored. They do Bible study. I don't think all the students do because it's optional. Because the real issue is moral framework, as far as I'm concerned. But I think it's incumbent upon the parents to make sure their kids have good philosophical and religious and faith-based understanding. When it came down to it, as the, even though I'm not religious, I do believe in God. And I would prefer children be religious over being woke. It's a challenge, isn't it? Because I'm not a staunch theistic individual, but I value the Christian moral framework more than I value the lack thereof. So I think it's important, despite the fact that I myself do not follow the theistic religions, but I do believe in God. Anyway, I digress. The clip was recorded during a class discussion on the crucible, and some of her students said she was not expressing her own views, but rather discussing provocative opinions. We were shaken to the core about the accusations he wrote on Facebook. It is both scary and disturbing that an edited 18 second clip could destroy a 30 year career when taken completely out of context. Fair point. It is. And if that's the case, then it's a bummer. But I don't care. You know, I feel for this woman if it is out of context, but I think these institutionalized learning facilities are just bad. Jason Parker said that his wife was dedicated to her students and condemned the decision to fire her. She's an exemplary. She is exemplary as a teacher and truly cares about the students. Needless to say, we have spent many sleepless nights because of this cruel release to social media of the 18 seconds. OK. Parker, this is a uh, uh, Parker wrote in response to a Facebook post by Daniel Call, vice president of the El Paso Independent School District Board, who said the video was lacking context. Now, this gets interesting. Update on my last post. After hearing from some of the students that were in the class, including my own nephew, I believe now the teacher that appeared to be promoting and normalizing pedos was pretending to advocate a position she didn't actually believe in order to challenge the students in preparation for them reading the play The Crucible. The video that many, many of us saw was missing this important context. I regret the negative attention that this situation has brought on this teacher and wish her well. I'm told she's a great educator. Jason Parker continued, we pray that you and the rest of the board will see this for what it is and not allow an edited video to destroy an innocent woman, her career, and her family in the process. So this is what Daniel Call wrote. She is an exemplary teacher. She was prepping the students for the crucible. But Call later deleted the post, commenting, my opinion about the situation changed once I was briefed by the district in closed session regarding the results of their investigation. There are facets of the situation that are not public knowledge. Amber Parker has not responded. So I am sorry. I don't know, innocent until proven guilty and all that, but I am inclined to believe that there are teachers that are pedos that are doing this on purpose. So no, I don't buy the excuse. Sorry, it may be the case, but I just don't buy it. Especially when this guy came out and was like, oh, actually, upon investigation, uh, not so much. The school district was immediately informed of the incident, which occurred at the end of August. And an investigation was launched, initially leading to Parker's suspension. El Paso's Independent School District Board of Trustees, led by Superintendent Diana Saavedra, then unanimously voted to fire Parker following her controversial remarks. You know, look, I got to say this. These schools tend to be woke. The districts tend to be woke. That being the case, they would want to protect someone who is actually doing this. They're, they're canning her. So why is that? I don't know. Could it be that she was trying to give kids critical thinking skills and she was actually mocking the pedos? And so that's why they fired her? I have no idea. I really don't. It's really easy to take a video out of context. I mean, you guys really got to understand people don't get it. Even to this day, it's shocking how people don't get it. You could have a video where it shows a guy just wind up and punch another dude in the face and that dude just goes down and they're like, whoa, that guy just killed that dude. Yo, what's going on? And then you can have a 15 second earlier clip where the dude who got punched pulls out a gun and is waving it at people, puts his gun away, puts his hand near it and then gets punched in the face. And so you're like, wait, 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 why did he hit him? We don't know. In the fuller video, you realize the dude was threatening and brandishing a firearm at people unprovoked 
and someone came and stopped him because the guy was a threat. You never know. In this video, taking out of context, for all we know, in the lead up to this clip, she goes, now the following thing I'm going to say is an example of a provocative opinion. Hence the video. We don't know, man. And I don't know who to trust. But I'm going to tell you this. More and more information has come out about schools and the horrifying things they tell your kids. Thanks in part to Project Veritas and their secret, the secret curriculum expose. Part four, September 11th. Teachers encouraging political violence. This is what they're teaching your kids. You got to homeschool them. You got to get them out. Because if not this school, there are tons of schools that are having drag performances and all this other stuff. Drag shows for kids. Here we go. Idaho drag show for kids canceled after backlash. Due to the misinterpretation of marketing materials and to mitigate the harm to our LGBTQ plus community, we feel it is best not to proceed with this performance. You shouldn't have drag shows for kids. That's like... So the funny thing is, they were like, it's not a drag show of all ages. It's a drag show of adults for all ages. And it's like, oh, yeah. uh, Would you put on a go-go dancing show for all ages? No. No go-go dancers, huh? Go-go dancers for all ages? No, you wouldn't do that. Okay. You see what they're doing? It's a manipulation. And they're targeting your kids. And we know they're targeting your kids. Take a look at this from Veritas. Ariane Franco, middle school English teacher, New York City Department of Education. This is what I told my students. I was like, guys, there are strategic ways to do this. You want to. I brought up a crazy organization that has done this. Like they chose which places to throw bricks in. They chose and they didn't do it in their own neighborhood. They didn't do it in uh, to black and brown communities. Doing it to our own community does not make sense. You got to go after the people who it's not directly affecting. Throw it, the brick, at the people that are actually doing the things that need to change. I tell them, my kids, we don't stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance. We do the Pledge of Allegiance every morning, you know, but we keep going on our business. It was just a, it was a class decision at the beginning of the school year. They're not talking about me, so I'm not standing up, you know. At one point, when I first started challenging the pledge, I had my my kids change the words. It was something like, I think we added at the end, and we will fight for those who this does not address or something like that. We added it because it's like, and liberty and justice for all, and we will fight until that is true. Liberty and justice for all quite literally means liberty and justice for all. It does. These people don't think so. The students and I would kneel during the pledge. This is what they're teaching your kids, and this is what they want for your kids. In another story from September 1st, prestigious NYC private school director touts sneaking her political agenda into classrooms. I felt like a double agent. Huge contingent of white boys are just horrible. Let's read. Norris. Unfortunately, it's the white boys who feel very entitled to express their opposite opinions and just push back. Oh, how dare they rebel against me? Yeah. There's a huge contingent of them that are just horrible. And you're like, are you always going to be horrible? Or are you just going to be horrible right now? Why won't you fall in line and do as you're told? Yeah. Awful teachers. Veritas Journalist says, is there any saving these Republican white guys? Nora says, I don't know. I think they need to go. I think they're really awful people. That's kind of what I'm afraid of with my white students that are rich. I'm like, do you ever have to deal with this? They are so protected by capitalism. It makes me sad. Norris, we need to find some like Dexter sort of like vigilante taking people out. You know the show Dexter? Oh, yeah. Norris, we need just some vigilante Dexters like here's your community of targets. Holy. A teacher advocating for the murder of white children by a serial killer. So forgive me. When a teacher is caught on video saying something abhorrent and defending pedos, I have to wonder if, uh, yeah, that's actually what they want and what they do. I just have to wonder. I think it's important that you pay attention to these things. Look what these teachers are doing. Crazy. New York City private school. Jennifer Norris, employed by Trinity School NYC as a director of student activities, was uh, was recorded admitting how her current leadership role facilitates her goal of promoting politics in the classroom. I just keep trying to disrupt wherever I can. And now that I'm in this position, I have so many opportunities to do that. So we'll throw it back to that first story. Out of context, you say. But this guy, 
Daniel Call, a trustee, said he changed his opinion. At first, he thought it was out of context. Then he changed his opinion upon further investigation. Now she's fired. He deleted the post. It's very, very interesting. What does that mean? The school district was immediately informed of the incident, which occurred at the end of August. And an investigation was launched, initially leading to Parker's suspension. The school district board of trustees, led by Superintendent Diana Sayavardra, voted unanimously to fire Parker. It's interesting. Some students and parents were quick to defend the teacher, who believed the clip did not present her beliefs. Ryan Ruv- Ruval Kaba, a junior at Franklin High, told Fox 17 she was expressing how it was ridiculous how we society might not be able to call people pedos, that we society will probably have to start calling them maps because it can be offensive to them. The class agreed. You see, here's the challenge. That expression is a good point. If her statement really was mocking the phrase maps and the class agreed, then she's telling the kids the right thing. So let me put it this way. I don't know about this teacher. I don't believe it. I don't trust her. I don't know. But either way, the school's busted. If the teacher actually was teaching kids critical thinking, the school fired her. Get your kids out of these schools. If she was actually telling them to respect maps, as as she wants to call it, pedos, then you need to get your kids out of these schools. Any way you cut it, homeschool your kids. You're going to regret it if you don't. One day your kid's going to come home and they're going to have a shaved head. They're going to tell you that they hate you, that you're evil, you're a colonizer. And no matter what you do, you won't be able to convince them until finally the state comes in and tells you you have no rights. Parker, a married mother of five children and two grandchildren, was identified by the Teachers Association as the woman in the recording. When the Daily Mail reached out to Parker, she claimed she was not legally allowed to comment. Norma De La Rosa, the El Paso Teachers Association president, said she is disappointed and angry at the decision to terminate Parker was approved so quickly. Former Old Dominion University professor Alan Walker, 34, who was forced to resign last year after they defended pedos by saying society should call them maps, has been hired by a Johns Hopkins center aimed at preventing child sexual abuse. Amazing. Look, simple solution. Don't know to trust? Homeschool your kids. Micro school your kids. Pods. Let's talk about pods. Pods, uh, pod learning is when a neighborhood takes all their kids, comes together, has a discussion about what they believe their kids should be learning, and then hires a tutor to teach those kids. It's substantially cheaper than public and private school. You have more control. It's a better way to do things. It's more cost effective, in my opinion. It's better for the environment across the board. The next step up from that is micro schools. Micro schools, like what we have out here that's being set up, it's a school that has about 60 kids. There are classrooms, but the classrooms aren't by grade. They're by your individual level. So a 12-year-old kid could have an eighth grade reading level, but a sixth grade math level. And they say, well, those are the books you're going to be doing. And once you figure it out, you advance. Some kids advance faster faster than others, and that's the way it should be. That's what they're doing. I think you should start looking into that. If you do not have micro schools in your area, you should make one. If you're religious, churches may be a good opportunity in setting, setting one up. If you're not, then you're going to need to find a venue by which you can have a micro school function. It's going to require funding. It should be cheaper than a private school tuition, but it's going to require putting money up. You'll need books. You'll need tablets, computers, whatever it is. But you got to get your kids out of these situations, man. If the conservative movement, if conservatives, if libertarians, moderates, the politically homeless, the anti-woke, if they all get their kids out of these environments, in, in two or three generations, this country will be conservative. If that's what you want, there will be a liberal component, but it'll be liberal more like me, not like the woke fringe left of lunatics. I think that's something that we want. I'd like to return to a sound liberal left that's like securing our borders is a good thing. Saving union jobs and bringing manufacturing back here is a good thing. Racism is a bad thing. Conservatives are pro life, pro choice, but we can compromise, right? Not with the far left, not with the woke left. The woke left claims the MAGA Republicans are an evil cult and extremists and all that, when in reality, they just have like typical traditional and classical liberal positions. It's the weirdest thing. But these people on the left, these liberals, they're they're in a cult. When a Republican, you know, when someone like Ben Shapiro is slightly left socially than Republicans 10 years ago, it's like we're moving. Republicans are moving. They're still pro-life. So what? The best numbers of our lives. What is it that these people want, these liberals? I think they just hate. I think it's a death cult. 
They sterilize their kids. They abort their kids. I think it is a death cult. They target your kids with this kind of exploitative nonsense and advocate for political violence and murder against them. Yeah, death cult. You see, among the right, not every person is a Donald Trump zealot. He has his zealots, but there's politically homeless. There's traditional liberals, disaffected liberals, libertarians. They all have different views. If you are in the cult, you have the same views as everybody else, and you don't know why. It makes no sense, and you believe every single hoax. How do we break people free from the matrix? Honestly, I don't know. I don't have all the answers. Never do. And I, I end a lot of my segments saying basically that. I can't predict the future. But I can point things out to you. While may, they may say that you're just doom scrolling and to ignore this, I think that's a trick. It's a trick to get you to ignore the problems that are emerging in our culture. No, we need to be vigilant. We need to pay attention. And we need to say no to this kind of stuff. The only reason Glenn Youngkin won in Virginia was because parents finally got wind of what they were teaching kids. And we've heard the leaked Zoom calls where the teachers say the parents cannot find out what we are doing. It's nightmarish. So I hope you are paying attention. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. over at youtube.com slash Timcast. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.